Okay, let's start. Work. <coughs> yeah. A new chapter. Uh, at the beginning of each chapter, I highlight some main questions, some leading questions which we're going to answer uh, during this particular chapter. What characterizes modern work? Modern work. What is modern work? What is traditional work? Old work? And what will be the future of work? I will outline that work <coughs> is dramatically changing. Work in the past was something where we went to. Yeah? We had a workplace and there we worked and then we went home, we stopped working. It's totally changing. Uh, in, in many areas, not in all areas, but in many areas it's really changing. And in this part, I would like to talk with you about the balance between work and the private life. We used to differentiate between these two different worlds, right? We have the work. And we have friends and family, sports, religion, uh, these private things. How do these things relate to each other? And how can companies make sure that these two things fit? Because there are some reasons why companies should take care for the balance of work and private life of their people. In this context, working hour really, really matters, all I'd say. Yeah. Okay. Um, after we have talked about work, we talk about a very special concept in HR, which is the employee survey. Employee surveys always were there to ask the people, how satisfied are you with your work and the environment? And how, how can we change? What can we do to improve it? We're going to talk about this in more detail, how it works, um, why it does not always work, yeah, and what are um, alternatives that could work? And one concept in, in, this, co in, in this context is really the employer attractiveness, Arbeitgeber attractivität. Yeah. There are companies out there where you would love to work. And there are companies out there where you could never imagine to work. Okay, think about it. What, in your eyes, what is the difference between an attractive employer and a non-attractive employer? So a question for companies is really, how can I improve strategically the attractiveness of us as employer? Okay, so these are the main questions. My promise, we're going to answer these questions. And you should be able as well. Okay? So, what's this? Work time recording, Arbeitszeiterfassung. Huh? Very traditional. Question to you, why is it there? <coughs> you know how this works. The people, the workers come here, they, they pick their card, yeah? they get a stamp, duck, and then they put the card in here, and then they go to work, and when they go home, they pass by again from the other direction, take their card, duck. At the end of the day, the HR professional passes by and <coughs> takes all the cards and put it into a system. Why is it there? For their pay, so that you know how much they worked. Okay, there is one great uh, answer. It's For their pay, you can, you, can, you, can, you can see how much they work. Indeed, they always start at the same time. Even though in companies where the people start at in the morning, 7.30, until, let's say, uh, 4.15, <coughs> even though they have always very fixed working hours, they have this. You can see whether they were there and showed up. To work. Okay, you can check whether they were there time. on time. Question to you, what would happen if a company would totally get rid of this? Would they don't show up? Would they don't start working on time? W wouldn't we know whether they are there? Think about this. <coughs> ah, yeah. yeah, they get the feeling that there somehow is a control on them and they yeah. People think, still think that this is necessary to control people somewhere. 
We're going to talk about this. Yeah, we're going to talk about this. Is it required to control the people? Is it required to check whether they are there? Yeah? We find, will find that there are companies which never had something like this at all. I worked in a company called SAP. We never ha had something like this. Never. We just started when we wanted to. Now, as a professor, I don't have something like this. That's why I was not on time this morning. <laughs> I'm there, right? Be, uh, okay. Uh, let, let's have a totally different perspective on this. There was once a study which dealt with one significant question. Uh, and the question was, where do people have their best ideas? Why are ideas so important? <coughs> Simple. Yeah. Because of innovation. The innovative companies, the companies that differentiate themselves against their competitors through innovation, they need one thing, they need ideas. The interesting question is, where do people get their ideas? What do you think? That's not work. Well, I don't know, but I'd say if you work in a, in a job where you have to be innovative and where you have to come up with ideas, you usually should enjoy your work and then you usually think about work when you're at home. Okay, very good. Well, I once read that the best ideas come to mind in the morning after getting up and at night if you're already in bed or fall asleep. In the morning when you get up, yeah, in the very first minute, hour of the day, and in the last hour of the day. Yeah. In the shower. Yeah, when you do sports. Yeah, when you run through the wood. When you drive the car. Um, but sorry, if all this is true, I mean, that's outside of work. Or what we would define as work, right? Uh, let, let's share some results. People have good ideas, as you said, in nature, while hiking, at home, during watching TV. Yeah? You watch TV? Oh, yes. Hobbies, spare time, sport, business travel, during holiday, <laughs> vacation. And the red ones are those which are relate somehow to work. At the workplace, four percent, four percent only. In interesting meetings, six percent. In boring meetings, ten percent. <laughs> when I show this slide to some companies, to managers, I say, "Now you know why you do these boring meetings." You know, because, uh, um, during breaks, or while using uh, creativity techniques. I mean, what do I want to show you with this? The most important things companies need, at least in, in those companies where innovative innovation matters, are ideas. And people are paid for their ideas. But the best ideas were created outside something what we name work. Okay, let's think about this. Okay. I mean, we, we could add some more things here. The, the most <coughs> successful songs in rock history were created where and when? During sleep. Not while they were drunk. They were always drunk. But <laughs> while they slept. What are the most successful songs in the world? <laughs> yeah, Stairway to Heaven. Valentine. Yesterday of the Beatles. Beatles. Satisfaction of the Stones. Both were created during sleep. Yeah? So Paul McCartney, in the night, he, he dreamed this song, and then he woke up, oh, what a great song. He wrote it down and then went back to sleep. Keith Richards uh, wrote Satisfaction while he slept. Yeah? Or oh, kind of sleep. <laughs> uh, I had this idea of this incredible riff. And Interesting, yeah? Okay. So, what I want to say here is that what, 
this is what matters. I mean, this is something that companies more and more learn that if you want to have ideas, then you should shape spaces, flexibility, rooms, times where people are so comfortable that they have their best ideas. So when we look at this, what is the impact on human resource management when we talk about working hours? Huh? If we really accept this, and yeah. so you can only pay the people um, when they are at the workplace. You rather should um, maybe pay them for the ideas. You should pay them for the idea and should not take care about working hours. Yeah, it's not about the presence; it's about the ideas. Absolutely. Okay, I, I would like to, I would like to show you a very simple idea here. In the past, and I, and I try to put it a little bit to extreme. In the past, uh, people went to work because you had a machine where you had to work. You went there in the morning. You worked at the machine at a definite time span. And then you left the machine, went home, and you stopped working because work was related to this place. Right? What you will do in your work, in your career, are two things. <coughs> you will think and communicate. Think and communicate. These are the two things which you're going to do. Maybe some of you will work with their hands, but most of you will work primarily with their brain. Think and communicate. Where can you think and communicate? Everywhere. That's the right answer. Everywhere. And that's a new <coughs> phenomenon, that, that work is no more linked to a physical space, to a physical location. So the term, I go to work, becomes more and more meaningless. Work is not something where you go to. Work is something that you do. Okay? You can think and communicate everywhere. It's not something which is related to a very concrete location. Yeah? In the past, you always worked with the same people in a very fixed, static organization. In your career... You're going to work with the people in your organization with which you like to work, with those people where it makes sense to collaborate. Okay? And you, you will hopefully, depend on how modern your employer is going to be, you will work whenever you like to work. Yeah? Okay? So in the past, it was really focused on this one single point. Static organization at one fixed location at fixed working hours. In the future, we have more and more rooms where you have flexible working hours, flexible locations, flexible organizations. Okay, okay. Uh, so, so as I said, the term I go to work on time becomes meaningless. Now, you might think that, let me, you might think that. Yeah, but if I work in a warehouse at Lidl, yeah, and I work there as a cashier, I mean, that's my workplace, yeah, and I have to be there on time, and I always work with the same people. Right. Yeah, for many, many jobs, it's clear that you only can work at one specific location, only at specific, uh, clearly defined times. What I just want to say is that we have more and more jobs, at least in the Western industries, where it's about to think and to communicate. More and more. This, 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 this part is growing. So for more and more jobs, this model is going to apply. Here is yeah, the question. That's, that's what's the point. Question. Yeah? But in, um, still, if you have a lot of, for example, in retail, you have a lot of people working at Kishiso, I don't know. Absolute retail. Banking in the in the service area, at um, a lot of lot of, uh, travel, 
Yeah, if you are a pilot, sorry, you have to be in time. You're playing. How, how, do you make, how do you motivate people to come in time? And they have schedules, right? In, in some areas, you simply have schedules. It makes sense. <coughs> also, it's sometimes a mixture. You know, I have no working hours. I'm totally flexible. My last book, I wrote in the night. Yeah, six week every night from ten to two, because I wanted to. When I do lecture, I have to be there at this moment, at this place. Really? Yeah. You know? We have both. But this flexible world is, is more and more, plays more and more significant role. Okay? So, let's talk about working hours in more detail. When we talk about working hours, uh, we also talk about working hours models. What is a working hour model? A working hour model, Arbeitszeitmodell, a working hour model describes how much you work, when you work, okay? And how flexible you are uh, when using your work time. So it's all about uh, duration, position, it's about volume, how much you work, it's about the flexibility. So what you see on this slide, it's a very simple scheme, yeah? This is one week, from Monday to Friday. And these are the, the hours for the day. And now you, you might have, you, here these different boxes are the hours which you work. So the model describes simply, okay, I have a volume of, of hours which I spend with the company in a week. Could be 40 hours, 35, 20. This is one point, one dimension. How much do you work? Yeah. The second dimension is, how are these working hours distributed across the week and across the different daytime? Okay? And maybe you have some hours where you have to be there from 10 to, to 5. And the rest can be handled in flexible terms except uh, 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 Friday. If you like, you can leave on Friday in the afternoon. Right? So the rest is flexible. Okay, so and this is a work. This is a working time model. Okay, and this is what we have in companies described for the people, saying, okay, this is your volume. This is how it is distributed uh, during the, the week, and this is this is the amount of flexibility which you have. Now, question to you, and this relates now to your point. When we talk about working hour model. When we think about how much somebody should work and we think about how flexible working hours can be, what, was, what must we take into consideration? Okay, I have an employee here, Bernd. My question is, what is his working model, working hours model? Hmm. What is appropriate? What makes sense? What must we take into consideration? In what kind of business you are in? Yes, the business, the industry. Why does it matter? You have an idea in mind? <laughs> Retail, different business, like maybe um, IT, yeah, travel, bank, higher education, right? Absolutely. It depends on the business. What else? The level of output we need. Level of output? What do you think? For example, if we are a manufacturer, we want to know how many cars, for example, we produce and if the company is... Yeah. Depends on the demand. Yeah. Right. On the demand and requirements. Yeah. I want you to produce so many pieces a day because there is demand outside. Right. Absolutely. So what's the requirement of the job, requirement of the industry? I think it also depends on the kind of uh, position or job that you do. Yes, De your it depends business. on the job. What is a job? A set of responsibilities. And some responsibilities require specific working hours. Absolutely. Now, what, 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 what we talk now, yeah, and this is interesting, is we talk mainly about the job. Do you see this? Talk about what are the requirements? What is needed to do this job well? But we have to add 
are some other points. On the expectations of the workers. So, the expectation of the people. Yeah? I mean, in a couple of years, you will become fathers, mothers, you're going to have kids, family. Yeah? And okay, you say, I would like to work less. I would like to have more flexibility so that, so that I can pick up my children at the kindergarten. Yeah? I don't want to have this conflict between my kids and work. So you expect flexibility, you expect a certain amount of working hours. So it's both. Yeah? So uh, here is a very simple idea here. The requirements of the job. This is where you focused on. Right? Is it specific jobs need specific working hours models. If you are a cashier, you have to be there at a specific time. Okay. If you are <clears throat> an R&D, a scientific worker, R&D specialist, Okay, we can have much more flexibility. If you are an author or journalist, professor, you can have total flexibility. Yeah? Uh, if, you, if you are a pilot, you have to work less. If you are, you have to work more. Right? So, so it depends on the job, and it's simple, right? But what you added is all, even important, even as important, as important uh, individual preferences. What are my values? What is my private background? What are my expectations? And then there is leadership culture. Don't forget this. Leadership culture. Working hours are very closely related to the leadership culture. We just said, yeah, when we talked about this traditional working hour recording system, it's about controlling people. Yeah, we ha I use this work working hour tracking, working hour recording, to control my people, to, to, to track my people, to see whether they are in time, whether they are there. And all this has something to do with trust. Uh, if you work in a company where leadership simply is trusting the people, saying, you have to do the job, I don't care when you do this job. I just, I just take care <coughs> that you're going to deliver the results. And it's up to you when you work. And this is a level of trust. And this has to do with leadership culture. There are companies out there where the leaders, managing directors, the executives could never ever imagine to have flexible working hours because they don't trust their people. Yeah? So this, is, this really matters. What is the leadership culture in a company? Okay. And then, of course, we haven't mentioned this, labor law. In Germany, as a company, I cannot expect my people to work 50 or 60 hours in a week. I can't. Okay? There is a limited amount of hours which I can work on overtime, whatever that is. Okay? I mean, uh, labor law is something sometimes in a conflict with what I want to do in a company. So this is a different story. This is Horst Meyer, right? Um, I just want to see that there are different factors and what, what you should take home is that there are two, at least two main tribes. The one thing is the job-related requirements and the individual preferences. So, what would you say? Which parts, requirements versus individual preferences, which will gain more power in the future? In an industry where you have a talent shortage, or if you are in a job where you have a talent shortage, the individual preferences will gain more importance. Absolutely. Then the company has to see how it deals with the requirement it has. Very good. Talent shortage. If you have a talent shortage, if you struggle in finding good people, you have to take care for the preferences of the people. Okay. If you don't have a talent shortage, no, you simply don't care. When we talk about working our models, uh, there are very different approaches. I don't want to talk too much about these different things. Uh, fixed working hours, part-time work, the German Kurzarbeit, doing recession, doing crisis, 
companies can reduce the working hours and get support by government. Right? Okay, uh, it's to really uh, to to increase flexibilities for the companies uh, in times of crisis. <coughs> flex time, trust-based working hours. This is, there you don't have a working hour model at all. Yeah? Like companies like SAP, they don't have any working hour models. It's simply that you say, you work 40 hours a week, we don't care when, we don't track how much. Okay? Uh, flexible annual uh, working time. We have companies like, yeah, in Stuttgart, there is a company like, it's called Trumpf. Yeah, every two years, every two years, each and every employee, whether in production or in management, every employee can decide every two years how many hours they want to work in a week. And they are free in deciding this. If I say as an employee, now I want to work 24 hours, then it's fine. Two years later, I can say, no, I would like to work more. I do. Yeah. And it feels very com comfortable yeah. to have this um, like yeah. free will somehow. The people I love it. Yes. And it works. Thank you. Yeah. So it's true what I say. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And part time work, you know what that is. Working 50%, uh, 20 hours a week, maybe. Um, so, from an academic point of view, I just want you to take home on this reference is that one thing is always about working time autonomy. That, that is really a key dimension whenever we talk about working our models, the flexibility, Arbeitszeit Souveränität in German, yeah? working out flexibility. And the other thing is the, the, the reference with regards to is it related to a day? What is the working hour in a day, in a week? <coughs> In the month, in the year, or in my life, okay? We also could talk about working hours during the life, right? Okay. So, work-life balance. Now, what does that mean? Now, we talked about work, working hour, flexibility. Now, when you think about work-life balance, I mean, you, you have heard this term already. What comes to your mind when you think about work-life balance? work huh? yeah. I think it should be a pretty um, fold graphic because yeah. if there is too much time that you don't really know what to spend on then yeah. it's a loss of time Yeah. so I think the job should really I think Google is a good example of that trying to uh, support their employees offering different fitness yeah uh, facilities or different washing facilities and we can oh, wash your clothes and stuff yeah. like that. So you yeah. just feel your time around the company. I think being young it's it's about that. Okay. Good. Good. Companies like Google come to our mind, yeah, or Microsoft. Yeah? They they offer things around work. It's not only that you have your computer mm -hmm. or your laptop and your your office, whatever that is. Yeah? You have uh, um, Space where you can do sports, you have additional services and all this stuff, right? Yeah. So things beside work, pure work, which is added by the company. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I have found I found one quote which I really found the best. And I, I don't share too many quotes in my lecture, but there was one quote by the former CEO of Coca Cola. He put work-life balance really to the point. I, I love it. I, it's here. Yeah? Imagine life is a game in which you are juggling five balls in the air. They are work, family, health, friends, and spirit, and you're keeping all of these in the air. Right? You will soon understand that work is a rubber ball. If you drop it, it will bounce back, but the other four balls, family, health, friends, and spirit, are made of glass. If you drop one of these, they will be irrevocably scuffed, marked, nicked, damaged, or even scattered. They will never be the same. You must understand that and strive for it. Work efficiently during office hours 
and leave on time, give the required time to your family, friends, and have proper rest. Value has a value only if its value is valued. Yeah? I mean, that's perfect. Yeah, it's a good picture to tell uh, work-life balance is not only something that is, that is managed by the company. It's not only something which, is, which needs to be allowed by the company through working our models. Work-life balance in many, in, in many situations, especially in flex time, is something that relates to the responsibility of the people. Yeah? You know what happens if you, if you totally get rid of any working hour recording? Uh, if, you, if you have total flex time, trust-based, what happens? Will the people work more or less? I guess people will work more efficient because if I'm not productive now in the morning, maybe I'm more productive at night. They, were, no. they work more, they, they were more efficient, they work more efficient. <coughs> and that's exactly the point. You work when you have the power for doing it. Maybe in the evening after you brought your kids to bed. Yeah. If you pay the people for just being there, I mean, they are surrounded by a lot of alternatives. I sometimes talk to managers and they complain, saying, you know what my people do at work? They surf in Facebook during work. And that's why I... I uh, forbid the people to use the Internet during work. Because if they have access to the internet, they start looking at Facebook. I mean, what's the point? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it. In, in, mo in, most, in most toilets and companies, you could, you could put a, 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 shoot, a tag on it, uh, corporate internet cafe. Yeah, because the people went there, because they have their internet in their pocket. And if they want to check Facebook, they go to the toilet or smoke. Or, uh, and that's ridiculous. The point is that when you are at work, and work means be there, you have to spend your time there. That's for what, you, what you're paid for. And there are some alternatives what you can do during your time. You can, you can communicate with your friends. You will communicate with your friends if you are paid for what you deliver. Yeah? The question is, do I waste my time with Facebook or do I deliver what I'm paid for? I mean, that's the point. I have a question. If I right. completely get rid of all time recording methods and everything, yes. doesn't that also involve the risk of a company using that to let you work more? I mean, if a company says you have eight hours a day, 40 hours a week to, I don't know, produce a pencil, I don't know, <laughs> um, and you need 40 hours to assemble a pencil and then you will finish and now they get rid of all time recording methods and then they say okay now produce two pencils you can do it whenever you want wherever you want just give us two pencils at the end of the week and now suddenly you need 80 hours of work and you yeah. can manage to do it this is, about, this is about target setting this is about objective setting yeah, uh, what is appropriate and what I expect for my people, yeah, and that's that's uh, that's a process of let's say negotiation. Yeah, but isn't the risk rather rather high that companies will use the flexibility to their own benefit because it's a very good way to save money and. Yeah, of course, of course. You say, well, I don't care about your working hours. I take care about what you deliver, and this is what I, what I want you to deliver, and this target might be set so high that you must work more than 40 hours. Yes, that's, that, that, that risk is absolutely there. Absolutely. And you'll we'll find this in some industries. Let's think about the professional service industry. The people work 80 hours a, w a week. Because it's, expected, it's not expected to work so much. It's expected that they, they produce the outcome. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I would agree. That's why, by law, <laughs> I have to add this, by law, you have to track working hours. It depends how you do it. 
you have to do it in this traditional way, uh, in very simple terms, is it that the people are asked to write down their working hours somehow? That's fine. Yeah. Uh, but by law, you should. I know many, many, many companies that don't. They never had a problem. <laughs> okay? So, from a legal point of view, it's not so easy. Okay? So, I just said that when we talk about working hour models, we primarily talk about how is the, vol the total volume of working hours distributed uh, throughout a week. Okay? But there are different reference uh, frames. Uh, we can also talk about working hours throughout a life. And that was, that was kind of vague, abstract, you know. Um, what we have here really is that, that we find significant changes uh, at work. To, to put it really extreme, in the past we had something like this. You learned, you worked, and then you retire. Learn, work, private. To, to put it very simple. Yeah. Mirror somewhere here, between here and here, between the second layer and the third layer, from the top. In the second layer, you see more current approach, saying, okay, I learn, study, school, study, then I work, and then I do my master, yeah, and then I work. And then I have a sabbatical. I mean, this idea is quite new. I mean, 20 years ago, we didn't talk about sabbatical. And then we work. And then, again, a kind of educational phase. And I mean, what, we, what, we, what, we, what we find in the future, and that's quite clear, and this is commonly understood in, in, in the industry, is that you're going to have what we also name a patchwork life plan. It's very individual. Saying, okay, I'm burned and I learn and during my study I already start to work and then I work full time and then I, I do my master and then I work part time. And then I do a kind of action education part time. I take care for the kids. My wife is working more, and then I work full time, and then I work half time, and I can learn. So, and this is <clears throat> this is going to be different from person to person. If 20, 30 years ago in the German industry, if somebody would have shown up at the HR director saying, "I want this, I want that, I want this," the HR director might have said, <coughs> "So sorry, but." No way. Go to Google. <laughs> Today it's different. Today it's different. Companies learn that they have to take care about the preferences of their people. Yeah? And in many situations, there are no reasons why people should not work part-time. Yeah? So this kind of flexibility over the life this is not the weekly flexibility, right? This is, this is the, the flexibility which you have in your life plan. This is also something which becomes more and more important. That's especially true because during the life, your preferences will change, right? Your preferences will change. And I have a picture here which shows that to a certain extent. I, I divide life into five different phases. This is a professional perspective. Five phases. <coughs> this is not scientifically proven. And I know there are different <coughs> models out there, but this model works best with me. Not me personally, but for my thinking. I think there are five phases. Learn, grow, decide, lead, share. Uh, in the beginning, I had a child uh, in the beginning of your profession. I, I mean, this is, this, is not, this is not the age of zero. This is not birth. This is the start of your career, right? So when we t I, must, I must correct myself. When we talk about life, you have some phases before learn, right? Okay? So when you start working, you will learn. 
Okay, you work. It's clear. You learn. The first few years are there. Real <coughs> learning is one of the key things you do when you work. You learn. Um, and so, so at this time, you gain your first professional experiences. At the first years, you still think about what is right for me. Should I really work in the retail industry? Is, is travel industry the right thing for me? Do I really love to work in projects or should, would I love, love to work on, on, on things which are more, more regular? Uh, so occupation orientation is still key at the beginning. Yeah? You test yourself. What do I like? What not? And then there is a phase where, it's, where you really build the foundation for your long-term career. I think when you are at the beginning 30, midst of 30, the point is, are you identified as a high potential, yes, as a high potential, yes or no? Are you among the top 10% people in a company which get the fullest support, yeah? or are you somewhere in the middle? That really, that, that happens in, 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 this, in this phase, when you're 30, 35, end 20s. Yeah? Uh, so this is the phase where it's primarily about to grow. Yeah, it's more than learn. Learn is cognitive. Grow means really to boost the career, so to get more responsibility, get trust, to get to get more complicated tasks. And then many of you, I mean, you can drop out at at any phase. Yeah, already at this point, some people still stick to their level for the rest of their life, but some others move to the next level, say, I start to decide. Yeah, you do not decide when you join a company. When you start your career, you learn and you grow. But then you come into a position where you have the responsibility to decide. Because why? Because you become a manager. Or because you lead people. You have to decide. And you manage things. If you do well over years, you come into a position where you start to lead. And this is, I mean, it's about around 40. It's around 40 where the main question for many people is where can I find my position? Where I really get into a driver's seat? Either as a professor, either as a partner, either as an executive or either as an entrepreneur. And then I lead. It's not only that I manage things, I lead. I lead a company, I lead an organization, I lead through ideas. Yeah. I'm quite on a, I have reached a level of maturity, experience, right? Uh, and then, when I get older, I probably will reduce my work more or less, yeah? So, and then I start to share. This is the phase where I use my, not only my knowledge or my experience, but I use my wisdom, yeah? I use my wisdom to support younger people, other people, yeah, um, I'm, I'm, I, I start working in some advisory boards, you know, and I'm the senior guy, yeah, I don't work too much, I just give my advice, <laughs> okay, so, I mean, does that apply for each and every individual? No, of course not, but, but in my eyes, this is a, this is a, this is a reasonable path, this is a reasonable way to, to, to to cut life into significant pieces. And you will see that along with these different pieces, also your private life is changing. Uh, at the beginning of your career, you might be totally independent because you are alone. You have a partner, you have a spouse, that's fine, you have a party and everything. But then, uh, you marry maybe, I don't know, I don't care. Huh? Uh, you start your family planning, you have kids, life changes dramatically when you have kids. And this is, for many people in the, in the phase where you grow, career and kids. When you grow further, divorce, <laughs> family, yeah? but you have money. You drive a big car, but you divorce, yeah? and you decide. Get further, your, your, your children are grown up, yeah? you become again more and more independent. Yeah, you have aging parents. 
yeah, you have to take care for your parents. That's a totally new dimension in this phase. Yeah? And when you're older, again, you have total autonomy. <coughs> then health becomes a topic. Health. Yeah? You have money and you take care for your handicap. I, I put it really simple. It's not that you learn these different boxes by heart and think that this is the truth. My, my message is only that you, ha you follow different phases in your life and in different phases in your life, different things are of more or less importance in your career and in your private life. Yeah? And things can significantly change. Yeah? So from a company side, and this is the lower level, HRM has to take care for very specific concepts. Health management might not be so relevant for younger people. Okay, the, the, the professionals in that area would, would not agree to this term. But, okay. uh, having working time flexibility matters in very specific phases in your life when you have to take care for the kids, when you have to take care for your parents. But sorry, not when you're younger, when you're alone, when you're single, when you party. Yeah. You have flexibility anyhow. <laughs> okay. So, so the question is, what is the answer of HR to these different preferences and situations in life? Okay. Another concept which relates to here is home office telework. Um, there is a little bit of mix-up uh, with these terms internationally. When we talk about home office in Germany, it means that maybe two days in a week, two days out of five, I work at home. In some other countries, uh, I'm not sure whether in the States, uh, home office means that you really work at home. It's, it's, home office means you have your office at home. Yeah? And there was this huge, huge debate, you remember, with Yahoo? Yeah? Where the CEO... Uh, stopped allowing people working from home, saying we have to come back. Home office. Home office is really one of one of the, the key concepts. Also, with regards to flexibility, there are some pros and cons, and they are obvious. I don't have to talk to about these things in in in, in, in detail. Uh, of course, with, with you can reduce costs. You don't have to. You don't need to deliver a workspace for the person where he or she works at home. Yeah. You have this flexibility, work-life balance, and maybe higher productivity when you work at home because you can work when you like, when, when it fits to your, to your other things, right? But the cons um, are if you work at home, I know it from my person, what happens when your kids always knock at your door? Oh, Papa, I have to show you something. Oh, no, not now. I have to, I have to review the exams, okay? Okay. Um, I mean, you, you're here and here is television. Yeah? The separation of work and life. For some people, this is hard. Sometimes it's good that really have this space between the work, 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 the office, and the private uh, area, and you have to drive a while. Yeah, so you all have this distance geographically and mentally. Yeah? For some people, that's important to have this physical separation. Yeah? And the second point was the main reason why the CEO of Yahoo expected that people to come back into the office, saying, we want that in our company the people work together, they are connected, they exchange ideas, they talk to each other, they communicate. That's why I want the people to work at one space. Right? Uh, that's what I mentioned uh, a minute before, risk of private disruptions. Uh, I'm not always sure about the availability of people when they work at home. I, I, I give them a call. Oh, no, not there. May, maybe shopping. I don't know. Try it in the evening. So, when I see my colleague working in the office, I can simply pass by. You know, that, I mean, pros and cons, quite obvious. Yeah? But I wanted to add this concept here. Yeah? Let me add one last thing today when we talk about work. And work... Uh, also relates to the physical workspace. Question to you. When you think about your future workspace, Arbeitsplatz, your office, and I allow you to dream, yeah, 
thinking about my ideal office, my ideal workspace. For a moment, think about it. How, <coughs> how does it look like? Do you have an idea? How does it look like? <laughs> Who would like to share his dream? <laughs> Is there somebody in the room saying, I don't need an office? Yeah, you don't need an office. I would love to just work on a computer or something because I can do it everywhere. Yes, you can do it everywhere. So like Accenture. Do you know Accenture, professional service firm? You go there, you book a slot in the building saying, oh, I would like to work there today. I book this lot, I go there, I work. You, you, you just have your laptop, nothing else. I mean, what else do you need? Yeah. Do you need this? Today I need a silent place. Okay, I go to a silent place. Ah, today I feel some kind of lonely. I like to work more closely to other people. Okay, do so. <laughs> I, I, can, I, can, I, can, I, I can follow everybody saying, I don't need an office. Who of you would say, I need a room by my own with a door and where I have my flowers, my pictures, my pussy bear, or what do you name it, titty bear? <laughs> um, <laughs> my pictures, my plants. <laughs> Who of you would say this? Yeah, I need my office. It's a shape with my own interior. Uh, how, who would say this? Yeah. I have one. I also have one. My office with my name tag. <laughs> yeah? Whom of you would say, I need both? I need my own blaze, which is my blaze with my name tag, but also I need some space where I just can meet other people whenever I want, have a latte macchiato, talk about things, have some silent space where I can really escape from everything. Who would like to say, who would say this? Uh, this is a majority. So, this says, you need to have options, yeah? different spaces for whatever you would like to do. Um, I mean, you know, and that's a very simple craft. We know that there is this typical relation between physical distance, yeah, yeah, physical distance, and the probability of face-to-face -face communication. We know this from science. We know that the, the, the curve is not linear. This is this way, yeah, okay, and and that's that's again the reason why the CEO of Yahoo said we have to go back because the, the physical distance relates to the communication. In our company, we can only succeed if the people communicate to each other. And we also know that, that the formal hierarchy, the way we work together, is in many companies reflected by the rooms, by the space, <coughs> and vice versa. I mean, if you have something like this here, the upper right-hand side, the floor with the separated offices, you will find these kind of offices in clearly hierarchical organizations, where in companies where it's more like a network, people work together in different shapes whenever they like. You have more rooms like this on the, 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 the uh, bottom right hand side. Right -hand side. Yeah? Rooms where people can meet and simply exchange. Uh, in, mod in modern organizations, you have both, like you find here on this picture. You can hardly see what that means, but it, it's, it's, you have different, different spaces. You have offices, yeah, where you really... Uh, uh, so this is the home, where you have offices, um, where you have your place, yeah, but you also have spaces where you can meet in groups, social places is the so-called coffee corner yeah where the people sit together and not only drink coffee but exchange things they they they, they really think I, I was in a company 
uh, called Prain Lab. Prain Lab. It's a company in Munich. They're in the medical industry, making software for medical industry. Incredibly successful. Yeah? The CEO is five years younger than me. Incredibly successful. Yeah? I was there and I, I really, I mean, I, I worked at SAP. I, I don't know <coughs> what a modern workspace is, but that was modern. Yeah? The coffee corner did not look like a coffee corner. Uh, they looked like, uh, I want to say kindergarten, but, uh, you know, there was one, one coffee corner which was only sand, like an oasis. Yeah? You, you had to put off your shoes, you step through the sand, and there were this hängematte. Yeah, and this sand, sand, sand uh, this this beach, this beach, typical furniture which you find in beach. Oh my God, Strandkorb. Yeah, so the people laid there and talked. As we asked, what do these people do there? They work, they exchange things, they they they, they communicate. And this company is not such successful. Even though they have this, they are successful because they have this. Yeah? So this is what we find more and more in companies, that you have this combination of, of rooms where you can concentrate and groups where you can meet others. <coughs> yeah? uh, very typical. And one concept which is also uh, dominant there is what we call hoteling. Have you heard hoteling? Already? This is really this flexibility that you mentioned, saying, well, my company is a space of options. I can go there and I can work wherever I like. Uh, so today I would like to work at a silent place. Today I would like to meet people. Today I would like to have more conferences. Yeah? And then I book my space. Now I just I have my portal and then I click where I want to work. Then I go there. Okay. That's hoteling. Very new concept. Today we know that we need we need a little bit our home base, yeah, combined with uh, with rooms where we can meet people, and it more and more looks like this here on this picture, really, yeah. Sometimes a little bit like kindergarten, but I mean that's fine. Right? I miss something like this at our university, really. Yeah, we're still the the old way, okay. But this is the future. Again, you might say, you know. How is it about production? The people who work in, in retail, they, they, they don't have workspace like this. Yeah, that's right. That's right. But in fields where the people primarily think and communicate, you will find spaces like this. More and more. Right? And the proportion of jobs where you primarily think and communicate is steadily growing. I already mentioned this. 